Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar on airway management. If bag mass ventilation is adequate, providers may defer insertion of advanced airway. Healthcare providers should make the decision as to the appropriateness of placing an advanced airway during the ACLS survey. The value of securing the airway must be balanced against the need to minimize the interruption and perfusion that results in halting CPR during airway placement. The OPA is placed in the mouth while an MPA is inserted through the nose. Both airway equipment terminates in the pharynx. The main advantage of an MPA over an OPA is that it can be used in either conscious or unconscious individuals because it does not stimulate the gag reflex. Advanced airway equipment includes the laryngeal mask airway, laryngeal tube, esophageal tracheal tube, and endotracheal tube. Different styles of these superglottic airways are available. If it is within your scope of practice, you may use advanced airway equipment when appropriate and available. OPA stands for an oral pharyngeal airway. It is a J-shaped device that fits over the tongue to hold the soft pharyngeal structures in the tongue from the posterior wall of the pharynx. An OPA is used in individuals who are at risk for developing airway obstruction from the tongue or from a relaxed upper airway muscle. It is meant for unresponsive individuals who have no cough or gag reflex. If used in someone who has these reflexes, it may cause gagging, vomiting, and possibly aspiration. To insert an OPA, clear the mouth of blood and secretions with suction if possible. Select in an airway device that is the correct size for the person. Too large of an airway can damage the throat, whereas too small of an airway device can press the tongue into the airway. Place the device at the side of the person's face. Choose the device that extends from the corner of the mouth to the earlobe. Insert the device into the mouth so the point is towards the roof of the mouth or parallel to the teeth. Do not press the tongue back into the throat. Once the device is almost fully inserted, turn it until the tongue is cupped by the interior curve of the device. MPA stands for nasal pharyngeal airway and is a soft rubber or plastic uncuffed tube that provides a con conduit for airflow between the nares and the pharynx. It can be used in conscious or semi-conscious individuals with an intact cough and gag reflex. Insertion can be facilitated with lubricant. Never force placement of the MPA as severe nosebleeds may occur. If it does not fit in one nair, try the other side. Use caution or avoid placing MPAs in individuals with obvious facial fractures. To insert an MPA, select an airway device that is the correct size for the person. Place the device at the side of the person's face. Choose the device that extends from the tip of the nose to the earlobe. Use the largest diameter device that will fit. Lubricate the device with a water-soluble lubricant or anesthetic jelly. Insert, insert the device slowly, moving straight into the face, not toward the brain. It should feel snug. Do not force the device into the nostril. If it feels stuck, remove it and try the other nostril. Suctioning is an essential component of maintaining a patent airway. Suction airway immediately if there are copious secretions, blood, or vomit. Attempts at suctioning should not exceed 10 seconds. To avoid hypoxemia, follow suction attempts with a short period of 100% oxygen administration. Monitor the individual's heart rate, oxygen saturation, and clinical appearance during suctioning. If a change in monitoring parameters is seen, interrupt suctioning and administer oxygen until the heart rate returns to normal or until clinical condition improves. Assist ventilation as warranted. When suctioning the oropharynx, do not insert the catheter too deeply. Extend the catheter to the maximum safe depth and suction as you withdraw. When suctioning an ET tube, keep in mind the tube is within the trachea and that you may be suctioning near the bronchi or lung. Still techniques should be used. Stop suctioning immediately if the person experiences hypoxemia, has a new arrhythmia, and, or becomes cyanotic. An endotracheal tube is inserted through the mouth or nose. It is the most difficult airway to place, but also the most secure. Once, only experienced providers should perform ET intubation, and it requires the use of a larynx scope. Fiber optic portable larynx scopes have a video screen, improve success, or are gaining popularity for field use.
The laryngeal mask is an alternative to ET inflated in two separate ports. The provider must correctly determine which port to ventilate through to provide adequate oxygenation. Don't forget we offer online ACLS certification. We encourage you to become certified as soon as possible, whether that be through an online course or in an in-classroom setting. So thank you so much for tuning into today's webinar. We will catch you next time.